gray boats had been made ready for the travelers, and those, these the elves stowed their goods inside. And they added also coils of rope, three to each boat. Slender they looked, but strong, silken to the touch, gray of hue like the elven cloaks. What are these? asked Sam, handling one that lay upon the greensward. Ropes indeed, answered an elf from the boats. Never travel far without a rope, and one that is long and strong and light. Such are these. They may be a help in many needs. Well, you don't need to tell me that, said Sam. I came without any, and I've been worried ever since. But I was wondering what these were made of, knowing a bit about rope making. It's in the family, as you may say. They are made of hithlane, but there's no time now to instruct you in the art of their making. Had we known that this craft delighted you, we could have taught you much. But now, alas, unless you should at some time return hither, you must be content with our gift. May it serve you well. Come, said Halter. All is now ready for you. Enter the boats, but take care at first. Heed the words, said the other elves. These boats are light-built, and they're crafty, and unlike the boats of other folk. They will not sink, made them as you will, but they are wayward if mishandled. It would be wise if you accustomed yourselves to stepping in and out here where there is a landing place before you set off downstream. The company was arranged in this way. Aragorn, Frodo, and Sam were in one boat. Boromor, Merry, and Pippin in another. And in the third were Legolas and Gimli, who had now become fast friends. In this last boat, most of the goods and packs were stowed. The boats were moved and steered with short-handled paddles that had broadleaf-shaped blades. When all was ready, Aragorn led them on a trial of the silver load. The current was swift, and they went forward slowly. Sam sat in the bows, clutching the sides, and looking back wistfully to the shore. The sunlight glimmering on the water dazzled his eyes, and as they passed beyond the green field of the tongue, the trees drew down to the river's brink. Here and there, golden leaves tossed and floated on the rippling stream. The air was very bright and still, and there was a silence except for the high distant song of larks. They turned a sharp bend in the river, and there, sailing proudly down the stream towards them, they saw a swan of great size. The water rippled on either side of the white breast beneath its curving neck. Its beak shone like burnished gold, and its eyes glinted like jet set in yellow stones. Its beak shone like burnished gold. A music came down the river as it drew nearer, and suddenly they perceived that it was a ship, wrought and carved with elven skill in the likeness of a bird. Two elves, clad in white, steered it with black paddles, and in the midst of the vessel sat Celeborn, and behind him stood Galadriel, tall and white. A circlet of golden flowers was in her hair, and she held a harp, and she sang. Sad and sweet was the sound of her voice in the cool, clean air. I sang of leaves, of leaves of gold, and leaves of gold there grew. Of wind I sang, a wind there came, and in the branches blew. Beyond the sun, beyond the moon, the foam was on the sea, and by the strand of Ilmarin there grew a golden tree. Beneath the stars of ever eve, in Eldemar it shone, in Eldemar beside the walls of Elven Tyrion. There long the golden leaves have grown upon the branching years, while here beyond the sundering seas now fall the elven tears. O Lorien, the winter comes, the bare and leafless day. The leaves are falling in the stream, the river flows away. O Lorien, too long I've dwelt upon this nether shore, and in a fading crown have twined the golden Eleanor. But if of ships I now should sing, what ship would come to me? What ship would bear me ever back across so wide a sea? Aragorn stayed his boat as the swan ship drew alongside. The lady ended her song and greeted them. We have come to bid our last farewell, and to speed you with blessings from our land. Though you have been our guest, said Celeborn, you have not eaten with us, and we bid you therefore to a parting feast, here between the flowing waters that will bear you far from Lorien. The swan passed on slowly to the height, and they turned their boats and followed it. And there in the last of Egladil upon the green grass, the parting feast was held. But Frodo ate and drank little, heeding only the beauty of the lady and her voice. This is Ray. Forgive me for that voice that wasn't hers. 